All right, let's look at the facts. They were funny, smart, and nice. Pretty girls are not funny, and they're certainly not nice. Not to us. Greetings, guests. Welcome to the patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking Shallow Howl and the Scale of Attraction to Personality Paradox. I was watching Shallow How the other day and started to write commentary on the audacity of the average male as it relates to their constant pursuit of women who are out of their league. Which sums up the movie, right? If you haven't seen it, Shallow How is a story about two men, Hal and Mauricio, who are not conventionally attractive, not in shape, have average bank, average apartments, yet their audacious and unrealistic expectations about the women that they think they should have access to are completely unreal. See, the problem is I'm, I'm kind of picky. I like them real young. Like, uh, did you ever see Paulina in her first Sports Illustrated layout? That face, but with better headlights. You know how hers are kind of dimmed lately. Heidi Klum's beams would do, and her teeth. Or, uh, ooh, that Britney Spears girl, she got great knockers. But uh, she's a tad muscular. Uh, actually, you know what? Her ass would do too if she had a better grill. We should all learn to embody this level of audacity. And although Shallow How came out in 2001, nearly 24 years ago, it's still relevant as I can bet my life savings that the manosphere is rife with dudes like this. Dudes who think that they deserve more than quote unquote average at best despite being average themselves. Dudes who feel entitled to have access to, back in Shallow House Day, the supermodel type, in 2024, this woman is the IG baddie, despite his lack of resources to sustain that type of woman. Dudes who want the women that they can't have to settle for the likes of them. But as I was re-watching this film, I noticed a much more interesting theme that I wanted to discuss today. And that's the juxtaposition of conventionally attractive women and below average in looks as cast by society women in film. And I want to preface this by saying I personally don't believe in the term ugly for women no matter one's shape, complexion, facial structure, height, ethnicity. I strongly believe beauty can be found in literally anyone. But for today's purposes, we are talking about the beauty standard and those who might not be so high on that Eurocentric scale. More specifically, I want to discuss what's fed to us when we observe a woman's looks in film and the commonalities of that character's intertwined personality. Like, why are all of the undesirable women so damn easy while the desirable women are not? In Shallow How, the film provides a stark contrast for the audience. There really is no in-between or average looking woman that How or Mauricio entertain in this movie. The women that Howe interacts with could either be type A supermodels and playboy bunnies or type B unattractive and quote unquote undesirable in their eyes. These undesirable ones in the film have some outlandish flaw. This could be a woman who is extremely overweight like his main love interest Rosemary or a woman with bad skin or an ollie shaped nose, bad teeth, unibrow. And in some cases they just have a bad makeup job to put an emphasis on their desirability factor. But the personalities associated with conventionally attractive women in contrast to the personalities associated with unattractive women in the film are a bit sus. How? You never called me back. What happened to you? All of the women in Shallow How who were not conventionally attractive were all portrayed as being, well, a bit on the desperate side. It's me, Katrina! We shared the cab together. I'm in town uh, taking care of my grandma because she's been sick and... All super duper nice. They've got these selfless careers and passions like Rosemary volunteering in the burn ward and being in the Peace Corps or Katrina who worked at the Society for Fighting Blindness. These women are also surprised to have an average, out-of-shape looking male like Hal's attention. They even interpret his interests as mockery, even though they are likely level on the scale of desirability. 
And when speaking about desirability, we all know the rhetoric that desirability in men and women are not the same. While the focus on women is appearance and that elusive trait of femininity, for men, the focus isn't just looks, it's also income, height, which coincide with assessing his patriarchal ability of provision and protection. And Hal is neither of these things. He's not tall, and we can assume that he doesn't have a lot of money based on his average apartment and the fact that he's working to try and get a promotion during the film. Yet, most notably, the quote-unquote undesirables in Hal's eyes, whom he is on the same level of desirability with, are all very eager to keep his attention. Like, because they are not conventionally attractive, and thus not used to men talking to them, I guess, and they're all eager to maintain the attention of this random man who's talking to them? Do we really think that this is how it works in real life? Are women who aren't supermodels or IG baddies so desperate and have such deep-seated insecurities about their physical appearance that they settle for just any guy who's nice to them? I don't think the world works like that, especially not now, but I don't even think this was a thing back in 2001. And I actually think that it's a very dangerous message that if you don't look like this, then you should just take what you can get. You don't qualify for one. Which is what most of these women in this film are doing. But at least women aren't falling for it anymore. So with the exception of Mauricio's girlfriend, whom by the way, isn't good enough for him because of the length of her second toe, all of the conventionally attractive women in Shallow Hal are, well, shallow, kind of mean, and dismissive. And this is a common trope. There are a plethora of examples to point to on display in our favorite teen dramas and rom-coms, which reinforce the stereotype of the cold, vapid, mean, sometimes manipulative, conventionally attractive woman. This shows up in Mean Girls, the pretty trio of girls who are shallow, void of personality, and mean, hence the title of the movie. And the characters who don't follow this stereotype have much more depth and are not. Sierra Burgess is a loser, which is one of my favorite films on Netflix, by the way. But Veronica, the pretty popular skinny blonde cheerleader, is a mean, shallow bully. And that looking at you makes me want to gouge my eyes out. While Sierra, who isn't the traditional standard of beauty, is smart and a highly aspirational teen. This shows up in Jawbreakers. I know all about you. You're the one in the corner at the dances that the geeks won't dance with. You're nothing. We're everything. You're the shadow. We're the sun. Never been kissed. Oh my god. Like there goes another lemming. Need I say more? And now and then, there's a character that breaks the mold, but overall, this is a problem. The problem with this trope is that it impresses on the masses that conventionally attractive and beautiful women don't get to have or need to have fully developed personalities outside of being pretty, and also maybe fashion and cheerleading. Oh, as if. To add to that, the fact that these characters are never fully developed outside of being pretty and fashionable makes the mystery of them, I guess, a little bit more alluring. This is why the Ferns or Josies of the world want so badly to infiltrate their clique. And this is also why men like Hal want to snatch them up as trophies. Trophies who aren't expected to be anything more than a man's beautiful, shiny object to show off. And they see these women this way because it's what's been fed to us for eons is that this type of woman is void of personality, as seen in film. If you've enjoyed this commentary, please comment down below, share your thoughts on this topic, and also like, share, and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.